first question. What's the connection between Wi-Fi 6 and 5G? Wi-Fi, so they, they're, they are not the same technologies at all. They're designed for different purposes. So in, in one answer is that they're completely different. However, however, it's not the full story, Cameron. Um, they actually do, a, each of those accomplish a similar goal, a similar purpose. And so they're quite complementary in, in accomplishing their goals. So uh, right at the very beginning of this, I used the word deterministic, and we, which means that the access point is in charge of the network. It makes all the decisions for that entire network. And, and so the deterministic nature of Wi-Fi 6 absolutely comes from the 5G standard. That's part of the 5G, um, to be more deterministic. Um, and, so all the, and so another thing that 5G does, that Wi-Fi 6 does, um, Drew was talking about resource units, right? Uh, in the 5G standard, one of the key things about that is um, called network slicing. Slicing, like, like slice up, you know, like slice a tomato, network slicing. And, and that's, that describes the ability for 5G to start to uh, segment different parts of the network and deliver a, a different quality of service to different customers or types in that 5G network. So it's called service slicing. Uh, Wi-Fi 6 does the same thing. It accomplishes the same, the same goal by using those resource units that Drew was talking about, being able to identify, dynamically adjust those resource units. So actually, so the answer to the question is they are not the same, but also they are highly, highly complementary uh, in terms of delivering more capacity. All right. I totally agree right. with you. I think and, that really with Wi-Fi, I think the way that I look at it is 5G can feed Wi-Fi because not everyone's going to be walking around with a 5G device. I mean, Wi-Fi has made its way into every nook and cranny of our lives. And we're not going to go swap out the motorcycle helmet behind Cameron. We're not going to go swap out our phones tomorrow. We're not going to go swap out every device that's around to a 5G device when we already support Wi-Fi on it. And I think that, you know, that there's been some cool talk about what 5G can do and what it means to different people and, you know, how it works. But if you look at the research and what's done with it, 5G makes it great, as Darren mentioned, complementary service where you can feed a Wi-Fi network with 5G. Uh, that way, everyone can have access to the Wi-Fi network and the people who have 5G can have also access to that 5G network. But I don't think it's a it's an and. I think, or, you know, an and or. I think it's a it's a both, you know. it's I think there's a lot of room to play there. And yeah, that's I think they complement each other very well. Makes yeah, sense. it's certainly it's certainly a complimentary story, right? I mean, I was recently, and not recently, but a few years back, talking to a, a CIO of a large hospital facility here in Northern California, and they had like you know 14 devices in their ICU connected to Wi-Fi network, right? So even then, it was a fairly mission critical network. Wi-Fi, there's always this talk about hey, this some cellular technology going to substitute Wi-Fi. Yeah, the reality is that that game has played out quite a few times. It's like uh, there are specific use cases. You get better price performance with Wi-Fi. 11ax takes it to the next level. Uh, but there are some use cases where 5G will be a fit. But I think I absolutely agree with uh, with Darren and Drew here that it's it's really a more of a complementary story. Really look at this. Uh, there's a lot of hype about 5G. There's a lot of hype about Wi-Fi 6, right? But it's really look at that use case. Look at what's going to cost to serve that use case most effectively. And chances are Wi-Fi 6, wherever it applies, is going to win out most of the time. But there are places where 5G will fit. 